Welcome back. So when I'm getting videos right now, I'm not getting the Shangros back. So even though there's a relation, I don't send it into the actual web API. We need to fix that. So we're going to do that this lesson. We're going to figure out how we can actually read from the database the related Shangra. So let's jump into the code. And right now you'll notice that we have two fields that represents the actual relation to the Shangra table. Two fields. Now this one is the one I would always use for writing data into my database. So this would be for writing. For instance, if you wanted to do an update, if you wanted to do a delete, if you wanted to do a create, you would always use the Shangra ID to explain the relation between the, t uh, the video table and the Shangra table. But if I wanted to do a read, I would use this one. So this would be for reading data back and getting the relation data back whenever I did a read. So let's try and use this Shangra entity right here in order to read the data back from the database. And let's actually do it the simplest way possible. Since we're already using the select right here, we can actually very easily get that relation information back in our current setup. Now, the first thing to know is that right now, I'm converting with the select, if you don't remember this, I'm converting everything with the select from a video entity, which I'm getting back right here, into a video. So I'm changing it and converting it. And if we look at the video, it doesn't know anything about a Shangra ID or anything like that. It just knows it needs a Shangra. Because again, the video is the core of our clean architecture, the onion architecture, and it's not allowed to know anything about the database. And in our case, it's only because we're using a relational database that we need a Shangra ID. So in our case, we just have a Shangra model object. So we need to convert it in the repository from the entity into the video uh, Shangra setup right here. So what we'll do is we'll make a new field right here we'll start creating a Shangra model inside the video model so we can start putting in that information. And we'll just do it by, for now, just adding a new Shangra right here. And that Shangra is going to be created by getting the ID and the name of our, um, of our Shangra relation. And you'd like to do that by saying first, the ID I want to set is going to be the entity's Shangra's ID, right? So, here we join two tables. So this is going to end up with a join to Shangra, and there we're going to get the ID, and we're going to set that ID into the ID of the model right here. And I'll do the same for the name. So there's also a name available, and now we can do entity.shangra.name. So what I'm pretty much doing right here is I'm joining these two tables together now. The video table is going to be joined using the video entity. It's going to join with the Shangra entity to get information from another table. So if we go back to our diagram right here, what I'm doing is I'm saying I would like to get the, the Shangra relation, I would like to use that to get information from these two rows in another table. And that's what I'm doing right here with this select statement. You probably are going to read about includes as well. We're going to look into that later because we can use that as well. But for now, this is how we can do it. Let's just restart our server and see if we can now get the actual Shangra entity back when we are kind of trying to load our system right here. We go back to Swagger, we'll just do a execute again and see what happens, and there we go. Now we actually got the real Shangra returned right here. What if we go in and set it to delete it again like we did last lesson? Let's delete the Shangra of ID1. It's allowed, right? So it seems the Shangra is deleted. Let's just try and execute again right here to read old videos and see if everything's still running as expected. And you know what? We got an exception.